Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make curved tents. Uh, and some of them are pretty easy to make right in SketchUp without plugins, but some of them will require plugins, so uh, we'll get to those later. Uh, first things first, uh, we'll start with this circle one here. So uh, to make this one, uh, you want to just make a circle, and you can pick how many sides you want on it down here. It says 24. I'm going to say 100 sides. And we'll just draw it out, uh, say 13 feet, type in 13 uh, with the uh, apostrophe there and turn on edges and turn off shadows. Now, so we'll reverse that face. Um, and if you don't have a shortcut made for it, you can right click on it and hit reverse face. And we'll draw a line to the middle. And we'll draw a line up, say, 8 feet. And uh, well, maybe a little bit higher than that. Let's draw it up to say another four feet. And so now what you want to do is draw a line from that point down to the other line. And you can add any kind of curve to it that you want. Just say here to here and draw a line down. But I actually want a little bit of a, a round off on the corner. So I'm going to say right there is how much, uh, how rounded the point I want it to be. And I'll bring this in, we'll say one foot six, uh, and for inches on the measurements, you don't need to type in the the uh, the symbol. You can just type in the number, and it will automatically go to it. And then uh, for this one, draw a line up here and there, and just to uh, give us a little uh, a surface to play with on the face. So now we got a little bit of a rounded corner there. I'm gonna just grab this one and pull it down like that. So that's, that should be good enough. Uh, and then what you want to do is you can just use the Follow Me tool. So I'll click the Follow Me tool here and click the face that you want to want to use. And then you can just literally just drag it around the circumference of the circle. And then boom, you got your, uh, you got your tent uh, face. And uh, if you just go into Hidden Geometry, you can see all the faces like that. This method also works for uh, square ones. If you want to make a square tent. Let me just turn off uh, hidden faces here. If you want to make a square one, you can just draw it uh, this way. Let's say 20 feet by 20 feet. And we'll draw a line across the middle and a line up. What was the last one? 12 feet. Say 12 feet. And I'll just draw a line. Now we don't need to worry about the curved top piece. We'll bring this in. Ah, there's all right. So we got our uh, tent angle piece, uh, whatever you want to call it, the peak. And again, just follow me tool, and then you can just drag it around the outside uh, of the box, and then you have get your arced tent. Now, there's a couple of plugins that you can use to do this sort of thing as well. And uh, the first one, which I've done a video on before, but I'll go through it again, uh, we'll just uh, undo that one. And so for this one, it's soap skin, and it looks like this. If you want to get it, it's actually available on the extension uh, warehouse. So you can go to extension warehouse, and uh, we'll just wait for this to pop up. You can type in soap, and it should pop up. Soap skin, uh, weird ampersand thing, uh, and bubble. Uh, so yeah, you can subscribe to that or, or install it. Uh, for some reason, the, uh, this uh, particular plugin has a time limit, so you need to uh, download a new one every year, but you should be able to, uh, with the extension warehouse, get the new version of it. So if you have the old one, you can just install the new one, and then you can use that here. So for this one, uh, you're going to actually want to use the corner pieces. And so we're going to draw the corners to here like this. We can get rid of this old one in the middle. And we'll draw a line to there, like this. Draw it out like that. We can get rid of this middle face. We don't need that one. And we'll draw an arc line down. I don't know, what was the other one? A foot, one foot six. I'll say one foot six as well. So I'll make sure, yeah, see that's not on the right axis. Make sure that's on the right axis. So we'll draw it down one foot six, right there. And do the same on the other side. It doesn't have to be, but we'll, just for the sake, uh, sake of it, we'll do that. Now, all right, so we have our um, we have our shape, and then the rest of the square doesn't really matter. So we have this triangle piece. And you see it has a bit of a curve to it. So what we're going to do now is we'll just click on 
the skin button and then this will bring up a grid and you can see how many divisions you have down here so we'll just say 20 divisions to uh, actually I think I'd enter by mistake there we'll undo that and uh, triple click that so I hit skin hit 20 and then hit enter and you can see how the division breaks up so I'll hit enter again and then you can see it will draw all in uh, in all of the uh, in all the faces and then it'll break them all up into into uh, polygons and different geometry and then as you can see now it's actually breaking up those polygons uh, to to align with the face of the shape that we just drew so now you'll see it pop out in a second so now we have that face and it also has a little bit of a dome to it as well and if you haven't seen the other video I'll show you this little trick so you can hit hit the bubble button or bub and down here you'll see pressure or it might be over here wherever it is you can click it hit bubble and then where you see pressure I'll just type in say a hundred and then it'll blow out a tiny bit well or a lot uh, so you can change that if you want uh, if you want to change how the dome looks in particular so we'll leave it like that for now let's just say uh, we'll hit explode and soften and you can make sure coplanar is on otherwise you'll get these little little lines in here and you can drag it all the way up or wherever you think it looks good sometimes you might get weird little uh, polygons that have little gray or darkened areas uh, and you can if you run into those you can probably just redo the uh, the skin uh, thing again and you might be able to fix it if you use a different number of divisions so we'll just use that uh, I'll just say component A and then I'll duplicate it and rotate it 90 degrees and uh, if you don't know how to use any of the the, uh, the the other tools here I'm basically just using the move and rotate tools which you can use with M M is the move tool so I can click a piece and move it and uh, if you want to rotate it you can hit Q and you'll get the little rotate tool and then basically how that works is you just click your initial point and then you click again for uh, the angle that you want to rotate against so if I want to rotate at 90 degrees I'll just pick here and then I can go that way and you can see down in the corner here you have your angle you can also type that in as well uh, so now that I have this I'm just going to duplicate it again hit M control on PC and we'll drag it out and then I'm going to scale with S minus one down in the red scale uh, and that actually didn't work properly but now I can just rotate it again so that's fine uh, I'll drag this over and I want to make sure that these align properly so I'm going to zoom in on them line up those faces and then now you have another one with a little bit of a bulge to it which is an interesting look uh, now there's a couple other uh, ways one of the best plugins for this if this is something that you're doing a lot of um, I wouldn't recommend soap skin it does work but again you'll run into some of these small uh, issues with the geometry if we just turn on hidden geometry you can see that it's a little it's not as clean as it could be there's a sort of random polygons thrown in there um, that don't really need to be there so a better way to do this would be the curvy loft tool set which looks like these uh, this is also on the extension warehouse uh, I think you might need a couple of add-ons so you can probably go to sketchucation and that's usually where they down where you can download it uh, and then just uh, if you want to install an extension I believe you can just go to uh, preferences and extensions and then where you, wherever you have that extension downloaded you can just say install extension and then locate it and boom you got it so uh, curvy loft the best way to go about making some of these tents would be with curvy loft and so we'll just um, let's well let's go with the trying to make another one something similar to that effect so um, there's a couple of different tools down here this one is splines this one is a path tool and this one is a skin tool and I'll sort of show you what each of those do uh, in context if you want to say for example make a tent that has say 15 feet by 15 feet I'll make that a little bit bigger if you want a, a tent that sort of goes from a circle to a square shape uh, you can do that with a uh, curvy loft and that's probably the best way to go about it so I'll just bring this into the middle here let me find the middle first 
I'll draw a line up and bring this to here. Hang on a second now. There we go. So, and bring that to there. Presumably that's attached to the line. Yep, all right. Now you can make the top a little bit smaller if you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to make it this size to uh, sort of show you how it works. So uh, what we'll do is we'll click these two surfaces, and then we'll click the uh, the uh, junction the spline face, and then that'll show you virtually. Uh, it's this is hasn't been done yet. It's not. It's a non-destructive preview, and you can see what it will look like. And there's a couple of different uh, options up here. There's like a Bezier curve option. There's a couple of different tools here to change how it looks. You can also change how many divisions it has. So if you want it to look, you know, if it's, if it's going to be sort of a, a, a lower uh, LOD model, then you can, you know, reduce the number of sequences, I believe this is called, or segments. Um, that makes more sense. And... Uh, yeah, so you can increase it. Um, again, I'll go with the Bezier curve here, and I'll just show you what it looks like. You can also click on the model, and it'll give you another preview. And there's a tension. So there's a top and bottom tension. So you can see how much it sticks up from the bottom. And you can also see how much it uh, gets pulled down from the top. So you can make some pretty ridiculous shapes uh, with the tool. But if you want to just make like a regular tent uh, type shape, we'll... Reduce the drag on the top there, and again on the bottom, so we can sort of have it pull down. Uh, and then we'll okay, we'll hit uh, hit OK on that, and then it'll draw your model for you. So you can see that it fades from a circle shape into a square, and again, again, you can you can reduce um, the top if uh, it's too big. And uh, you can use even soap skin if you want to put a little dome on the top of it there. Uh, so there's that one. Now the path tool does something similar. I'll just undo it uh, and show you again what this one does. So in order for this tool to work, you need a shape uh, connected to another shape with a path. So we'll just click the path tool. The first click needs to be the, the line that connects both. And then you can just collect the other two faces and then we'll hit OK. And then it basically will do the same thing. It'll convert one shape into the other uh, pretty much, uh, again, non-destructively, but uh, as, as linear as possible. So it'll go from a circle directly into a square, you know, vice versa. Uh, so there's not much control there. You can um, sort of fool around with how, the, how it looks a little bit, but there's no, uh, as you can see, there's no tension options here so if you're looking for a more free-flowing look this probably isn't it but if you want uh you know uh, some complex shapes to flow into other complex shapes and you really don't feel like modeling the in-between uh, then there's there's you know that that possibility the last tool in the curvy loft uh, tool set is skins and the skin tool basically is sort of like uh soap skin but it doesn't really give you an option in uh what it does. It just sort of finds a direct path and then just fills the in-between. Uh, so for example, if I did, uh, let's do a, a little bit of a different tent here real quick. So we'll do, sometimes you see like those circus tents and they have uh, sort of just one, one piece, but there's a couple of different points throughout the tent. So I'll just lower this because it's a little bit high. Do that uh, and we'll do our Depression thing again. Let's just say one foot. Ah, there's not much of a drag to that. So let's say, uh, let's say two feet. And again, over on this side, two feet. And you erase those lines in between. And now uh, we're going to copy all of this. Drag it over here and minus one. Quick way of inverting your model is just to do that and hit minus one. Uh, and then we'll draw another, I'll we'll erase this line real quick and draw a couple of lines between these points and another one down here. That looks good. And then we can erase all of these 
these other faces that we don't need. So we just basically have the skin or the, the skeleton, I guess, uh, of the model. And now we're going to put the skin onto it. So we'll copy this. We'll hit the skin button. And again, this pulls it up so you can change all of the how many how many segments it has. Looks fine to me. I'll just hit OK. And uh, so it's already made it into a, co a separate component, even from the frame. Uh, so now we can drag this on to here. And I'll bring this over here and reverse it with the minus one. And then I'm going to select these faces. Try not to select the components we already have. And now this one will have, it won't just be straight across. Now, like, like, like these end, end pieces basically just flow straight across because it's just an arc up and flat on the bottom. But because this one here is an arc on the top, the, low, the, the middle piece here is going to be lower than the end pieces. So there is actually going to be a bit of a concave uh, going on with that. So uh, we'll just see how this works. Hit skin. And now, yeah, you can see that it, it sort of droops in. And again, that looks fine to me. Uh, something that uh, this particular plugin does better than SoapSkin, again, I think is the way it treats the edges. Whereas you can see SoapSkin over here is some weird depressions again with the excess polygons you can see turn on shadows you can see that the edges here are very clean because they're separate components and separate uh, separate models and we'll just finish the tent I guess I eh? drag this over here uh, I'm going to hit scale on it first and then minus one and then we'll drag it to meet up with the face and I believe these are lined up maybe they're not Hang on a second. No, they're not. Here we go. Now they're all matched up. All right, great. And so there we have, if you want to make even just like a tent you go camping with or something, something like that. Uh, and there's endless variations of things you can do just with uh, these separate tools. Uh, all these plugins are free. Soap, uh, Soapskin is free. And I believe Curvy Loft is free as well. So if you want to make some sort of tent or uh, even just even just if you want to make some sort of domed uh, skin, like if you're working on a, a car model and you want to fill in the gaps between, uh, you know, really complex fenders or hoods or something like that, then Curvy Loft would be a great tool for that. Even soap skin you can combine. And uh, SketchUp on its own is still a pretty powerful workspace. So thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you very much.